game has been played for nearly 200 years, that they're always trying to play this fear mongering card, that we have to choose between two brands of evil because imagining that something better is possible is just unthinkable and selfish somehow. And okay. I have it on the screen since you were talking about it. And let me read it. It says, here's a Whig newspaper making this. Oh, this is this is a screenshot of what you what you type. So here's a Whig newspaper making the same argument in 1844. Whigs ran slave owner Henry Clay. That's the Whigs. They ran a slave owner. Democrats ran slave owner James uh, Polk. I remember that. Not because I was there, but I know the history. Uh, the, the Whigs said they were less bad on slavery than Democrats and yelled at everyone with a conscience who voted for the abolitionist libertarian or liberty party. So this essentially is the same thing. The abolitionist liberty party is the Green Party. Then you have the Whigs and the Democrats, which is the Republicans and 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 uh, uh, the Whigs. I'm sorry, which is the Democrats and the Whigs. One has a slave owner candidate. The other has a slave owner candidate. It's slightly better. And instead of voting for the party that's against both, that's against slavery, that is an abolitionist to slavery, they would rather you pick the lesser of the two evils of the slave owners. And that's, this is such a great uh, point. Now, it is kind of blurred out, but do you know what it kind of refers to in the in the smaller print here, uh, Zoya? Oh, it's showing uh, part of the actual newspaper clipping, which it's big okay. enough on my screen. I can read it really quickly. OK, go ahead. Uh, every vote that is thrown for Mr. Bernie is, in fact, a vote for Mr. Polk. Where have you guys heard that before? <laughs> uh, Mr. <clears throat> Uh, no matter how nice the conscience, no matter how good the intent, the man who votes for Mr. Bernie should should he view the matter in its right light and true bearing cannot wash his hands from the guilt of promoting the cause of slavery in the United States. Wow. There you go. There wow. you go. The whole, a, a vote for the Green Party is a vote for Trump thing. Nobody just invented that. It's two yeah. centuries old, guys. They're wow. always playing this game. So your only conscious way to oppose slavery <laughs> is by voting for someone that supports slavery less. You can't possibly is... vote for someone that's against slavery. So if these people <laughs> are allowed to control our discourse, we would still have slavery today. Because wow. their, their entire premise is maintaining the status quo and that we have to accept things as they are and never fight for anything better. This is such a great uh, example or such a great way, a receipt. I, let's, let's use that. This is such a great receipt for people to open people's eyes because it's one thing to talk about it, but to see this is from 1844. So we're coming up on, like you said, two, uh, two, two hundred, uh, two centuries. We're coming up on two centuries that they've been employing the same lesser of two evils, and they try to make it seem like this is a new thing. Remember, Jill, Jill, uh, Biden was trying to act like this is, a, yeah, we're gonna have to go ahead and vote for, you know, let's. I know you wanted Bernie, but you know, we got to keep Trump out of the office. This is the same argument. So to those, the, the David Sirotas, the, you know, the people who still want to advocate this, uh, this lesser of two evils, this is something that we should start to bring up to them. I would love to have those type of people on where I can bring this receipt up and say, this is the same thing. You, you get what I'm saying? So it's not just like doing the same thing over like twice. This is like doing the same thing over, and I'll let you chime in, uh, uh, Apollo, because I see you shaking your head. This is like the same thing over, what, in 200 years for that oh, same thing over like 50 times. You get what I'm saying? We're not taught this history in school, and people might not know that this is a game that's been played, you know, every single election. Every single election has been the most important one of our mm -hmm. lifetime. <laughs> Um, and um, I want us all to say that we are not going to play this game anymore. Why on earth should we ever vote against our interests? 
It is absolute madness. And they are trying to scare you into it because fear is all they got. Not policies, not actions, just scaring you that if you don't do this, something worse will happen. And meanwhile, they always push through horrible policy that harms all of us. And that's exactly what's happening right now with the president being set with Trump. Uh, obviously, you don't have to like him or you can love him. It really doesn't matter. But either way, they use these instances to constantly increase surveillance and limit our power. Uh, look at 9-11 and the Patriot Act and all of the power that they are able to circumvent Congress now to declare war. They've relabeled it. They call it uh, active military action, you know, and, and all of this uh, loophole language. But at the yeah. end of the day, both parties are taking our rights away our, and making our living conditions worse. And that is, should be the only thing that we're afraid of leaving things as they are, not taking it to a fight. Because th these two parties work hand in hand. They play off each other. And they're always going to tell us that we only have to choose one, that we have to, quote unquote, grow mm -hmm. up, that it's infantile somehow to fight for your interests, to fight for you, what you believe in, that the grown up thing to do, that the pragmatic thing to do is to vote for your own suffering. It is completely irrational. We have got to stop these people from getting away with it, from pushing these propaganda talking points, from convincing people that will happen. And I'm already seeing it as election season is approaching and it's going to kick really into high gear online and probably at the dinner table with some of your family mm -hmm. members. Uh, but we ultimately have to take back our power and our power is in our labor, which means that we have to be organizing towards a general strike and not stake hmm. everything on elections and vote our own conscience in elections and get back to forcing politicians to earning our votes. They are not entitled to them. Yeah. So uh, to piggyback off of what Zoya said. What has the Democrat Party, what has Joe Biden actually done uh, that's different than what Donald Trump did? You know, because people said you can't vote for Trump because you'll start World War Three. And look what's happening right now. He's literally instigating yeah. two nuclear powers at once. Literally uh, two worst countries to instigate are the very countries that he's instigating. Uh, and he deported more people than, Joe, uh, than Donald Trump did. And Obama and uh, Obama in his final year de uh, deported more people than uh, Trump did his first year. It's just that, you know, because of Trump's rhetoric, uh, uh, Obama's crimes like were brushed under the rug. So when 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 the core policies come into play, like these parties are not different at all. Some they just, they just give some lip service about some social issues and spot it. But when it comes to like actually waging war, actually uh, uh, deporting undocumented immigrants and whatnot, uh, they're the same. And if, if, if anything, the trajectory is getting consistently and consistently worse, you know. Uh, the military budget is higher than it's ever been. Uh, the climate, uh, what is it? What was that uh, legislation before? Um, uh, inflation reduction. Yeah, yeah, that one. yeah. Uh, opened up, I think, six hundred million acres for offshore drilling. Um, yeah. Was it offshore drilling or was it like uh, land drilling? One of those. It two. was land. It was it was land, uh, government lands or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and that was Joe Biden. So you know, as far as like. Uh, actually saving our planet, actually uh, destroying the establishment, actually abolishing capitalism. None of these parties are going to really do shit for us. And Joe Biden uh, has literally given nothing for us to vote for. You know, uh, Cornell West actually gave Joe Biden credit about cutting child poverty in half, uh, mm -hmm. which I personally don't agree with them on that because... Uh, Me either. As, uh, yeah, because uh, as, uh, you know, and a lot of people aren't really talking about this, but uh, the the increasing wars with uh, Russia and with China, the uh, global push for de-dollarization that we're going to feel the effects of that here at home. Like mm -hmm. inflation is going to go out of control. Uh, the price of food and energy is going to go out of control. So whatever poverty reduction that George, uh, George, not who the fuck am I thinking of? Joe Biden. Not, Joe yeah. Biden. <laughs> yeah. Um, whatever poverty reduction that uh, Joe Biden did is going to be undone through his other policies. And he, and nothing's forcing him to do this. Like he, he could, well, I mean, the, his puppet masters are, but uh, 
he could stop if he wanted to, or if his puppet master wanted to, but he's literally actively making things worse. So any good he's doing is being immediately undone in a matter of time. 